Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, today I'm talking about Supergrass, um, who I'm sure all of you are aware performed at the um, Taylor Hawkins tribute. Um, and I'm reminded of Supergrass because, I don't know, Taylor Hawkins used to love that band. He's said to me on more than one occasion, you've got to listen to Supergrass. And I would always reply... Yeah, I know. I've been listening to Supergrass since they came out. Um, one of my favourite songs by them is Caught by the Fuzz, and I wanted to talk about that song in particular because it's so exciting to listen to, even now. What, it was released in 1994, and yet, 28 years later, it just still sounds really exciting to me. Um, I'm going to try and put these headphones on over a trapper hat. I don't recommend you try this at home. It, it can dull the sound somewhat but um still looks cool though right yeah justin hawkins rides again again So, Caught by the Fuzz was released in 1994, as I've mentioned already. Um, It was produced by Sam Williams and John Cornfield. Um, Even before being signed to a major label, Caught by the Fuzz had been put at number five on John Peel's Festive 50 of 1994. I'm not sure what the Festive 50 is. Presumably that's like John Peel's favourite 50 songs that are not necessarily Christmas related, but he happened to list them during the the seasonal period and um, the song is written around the true life incident of uh, lead singer Gaz Coombs arrest and caution for being caught in possession of cannabis at the age of 15 I do wonder if that's where the Supergrass band name comes from far be it for me to speculate on that Supergrass facts formed in 1993 in Oxford the band signed to Parlophone Records good little label that like them um, in 1994 and produced I Should Coco the next year and the best-selling debut album for the label since the Beatles is please please me Um, apparently they're considered Britpop I don't know I think the music of Supergrass actually transcends Britpop not that there's anything wrong with Britpop I just don't think they sound like it their first album's fourth single all right was a huge international hit and established the band's reputation that was the one where they're on the bikes on the video I remember being at college when that song was a huge hit and I loved it. Um, It's the kind of band where even their most sort of omnipresent mega songs that you can't avoid don't annoy you because they're just really good. So the first thing you notice when the song starts is it's recorded so hot that it's hitting the limiter and it's saturated, super compressed, um, and the bass is mixed pretty high, so it really really throbs. Um, that might be because I'm listening to it through a tra- trapper hat, so I'm going to try and find a way of getting these headphones underneath the flaps. No? Oh, let me try that again. No, it still sounds like that. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, it's it's what I would describe as a very hot recording. But then when presumably Gaz is hitting that that A chord in the intro, he's hitting, it sounds like he's barring like with his little finger across um, the fifth fret of the, at the, on the fifth and sixth strings. So you get that. I always love playing A's in this way. I mean, if you wanted to be a purist, you'd go like this. And that would be the highest note you hear. But when you do this, you get an extra root. There's actually three roots in it. There, there, and there. Um, to me, it just makes the, the chord ring out in a, in a, just in a really special way. It doesn't. I don't think it looks as cool as just going. Yeah. When you look at the, my hand, it's like, it looks a bit technical, but the sound of it's really good. I think. And then when he goes into this sort of palm muted, sounds like he's playing an A7. And then when he goes to the D, 
I feel like he's probably playing it here because one of the things you can really hear is that F sharp in the D. And then I think that shape goes down a semi. I mean, there's another way of playing this, which would be like that verse. But the way Gaz plays it, you get a lot more of what I like to call harmonic information because you're always hearing most prominently the root and the major third in this is all the third. And those two notes really tell your ear everything they need to know to um, place the melody and contextualize it. There is a, a huge amount of affectation in Gaz Coombs' voice, but it makes it so English and charming and unique as well. This, this, if you, I'm a bit loath to try and compare his singing to anybody else, but sometimes I hear a little bit of Steve Marriott. Sometimes I hear a little bit of um, Kevin Rowland from Dexter's Midnight Runners. Sometimes I hear a bit of Bowie. There's all sorts going on in there, but the main meat of it is a really beautiful sort of gritty timbre that's that's all gaz is i think is a unique and recognizable english vocalist and uh, you know you got to love those and then he gets to this if only my brother could be here now that stuff is uh, doubled in the recording it's the nearest thing to sort of hi-fi that you get at that point. And there's somebody going, Ooh, in the background. Tonight! Yeah, and then it gets to this really cool bit. I love, there's a little passing chord bit in here. Aha, that's it. So the interval between this and this is six semitones. There was, there's another song that I was um, considering talking about, uh, which was the, a song called Richard the Third. I think at a later date I'll talk about that one again as well because because uh, I think the way they compose their songs is really clever because you have things like this most evil of um, uh, chord transitions. And they always find a way to make that just sound fun. <laughs> you know, it, you, your ear definitely pricks up because it's at the end of a ooh, ah, ooh, and you think you know where it's going and, and it just takes a slight diversion that um, I find really exciting. Is that F sharp with a passing G sharp? Yeah, so then even that's another Diablo interval. See, I think that's a middle eight. An ooh wow ah, ooh middle eight. Brilliant, that last verse is um, from his mum's perspective and he, and he says, if only your father could be here now, he'd break down and he'd throw you out for sure. Is that what he's saying? Yeah, if only your father could see you now, he'd break down and he'd throw you out for sure. I never should, I never should have let you out tonight.
I know a lot of people who've uh, misbehaved in their youth and it's always like the shame of their mother that sets them on the straight and narrow. God, it's such a brilliant song. It's so concise and there's no fat on it at all, you know. It's really a lean piece of brilliant songwriting. A couple of left turns and there's so much... As I said before, so much harmonic information in the way he's playing that guitar that it contextualizes a, a brilliant story. I oh, know it's, it's a great. This is a great record, um, and I'll talk about Supergrass more in the future because I love them, and you should too. So listen to the whole album. I should Coco, you'll love it. Trust me. Justin Hawkins writes again. get to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications watch one of these two videos buy yourself a faux fur trapper hat and some over ear headphones and use that ensemble to listen to supergrass nice one <laughs>